that you have made, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for the mind to come out to study more of your word. We thank you for those who have made their way inside the building. We are grateful. We are thankful for that. We thank um, you for those who are on Zoom today. And we just ask that you um, allow us to um, teach a lesson, oh God, that we may adhere to it, not just be hearers, but doers of your word as well. We ask that you look on our leaders on today. We ask that you look on each and every one, oh God, that's uh, presented and those who aren't presented are present um, today. We thank you. We praise you. We ask that you forgive us of any sins. Oh God, we want to lift up clean and holy hands before you on today, God. We thank you. We love you. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Um, and so this is a new, this is a new, um, this is a new um, uh, uh, lesson. And we know um, the last uh, books or uh, months were like prophets and all of that. And um, we're kind of like bringing it down to a more simpler um, Sunday school, um, which I think is good, but it is, uh, most of these units are talking about faith um, this month. And so this is, this is a great lesson. I mean, it says, why do you worry? And why do we worry? Can anyone address that before we get into the lesson? Why do we worry? Missionary Irie said, because of the un unknown. That is so true. Would anyone... Why do we worry, Mother? Oh, what it is. You're returning to progress and you're kind of about it. Amen. And Mother, um, remind me of, I know your name. I know you really okay. well. Mother Evangelist Eugene Givens. Yes, 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 yes. How can I forget? But she was saying the unknown, and Elder Ivory have his hand up. And what were you going to say, Elder Mr. Ivory? Uh, worry, it simply means to uh, torment oneself. Wow. Right? Wow. With or suffer from disturbing thoughts. Worry. And let me get one more. Okay. Say that again so I can tell them what you said. I wish it was a way that. They could... Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Great. Okay. And we have three hands up too after you say something. Okay. This is absolutely important because God really don't want us, and we're gonna find out in this lesson worrying. Because number one, worrying, uh, worrying simply means to torment oneself with or suffer from disturbing thoughts. And then one more, it says to um harass. Ar by repeating, biting, snapping, and the words of conditional feeling of uneasiness or anxiety. So we can see in this lesson, we're going to learn why God don't want us to worry. Hey, amen. And so I see Sister Sybil, Mother, and Deaconess Rachel, and we're going to Yes. I say when we worry, we're basically telling the Lord that I don't trust you. Because if you have a resume when he's always come through, all you got to do is look back. If he came through in the past, he's not going to stop now. Okay. Uh, Deaconess. Rachel, yep, yep. we worry because we want to be in control. So if, when we're not in control, we worry and because we want to do it, but we need to trust in God because God will do it for us, but we want to control. So it's just saying, I don't trust you, God. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And so our lesson is, why do you worry? And we know Last year, we had plenty to worry about, or uh, I, I mean, I would say to be concerned about. 
we had plenty to be concerned about because of the pandemic. People lost their jobs. A lot of people died during the pandemic. It was just like a spirit of fear just masking the land, you know. And so um, I see two hands up still. I don't know if you guys took the hands down or not. Um, but well, um, you you never call no, you can oh, you I'm never call never I'll called me so my hand was up but anyway I think because we worry because we don't have faith number one that God's going to take care of all our needs and we worry because we are afraid we're afraid that the, you know we're always waiting for the next shoe to drop we fear and and it's it's in our it's in our natural sense and not in our spiritual sense so when we worry we're totally out of the spiritual realm of God that's why I know when I worry I know where I'm at. I'm not in God's will at all. I'm worrying, 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 worrying because I don't figured it out. I think it's going to happen this way. And I'm afraid that it's not. I'm not trusting God for everything. Amen. And um, that's basically what it boils down to, because the enemy deals with us with, you know, with the uh, tangible things we can see. We can see the bills. <laughs> we get the phone calls. So that's that's something that's a reality to us we we you know we have this you know in front of us but we still have to look to God because God will take care of us well let me read let me I'm getting ahead of myself I better go with the bible basis which um, our lesson is found in lesson um, in Matthew 6 the 25th through the 34th um, verses our bible truth is Jesus assures his followers that's number one. We got to be following God. Amen. Amen. Uh, that God will meet their needs. Memory verse. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly father knoweth. And that's E-T-H. That means he knows all the time what we have need of. Amen. And it says that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. A shall is a promise. Amen. And our lesson aim is by the end of this lesson, we will agree with Jesus's teachings not to worry or be anxious, appreciate God's care for everything in nature, and embrace the opportunity to trust God in everyday life. Amen. Praise God. And I heard someone say, uh, we don't believe when we worry or what have you, and worrying should not be in our vocabulary, but we know on the natural side, you know, the scripture says first natural, then spiritual. Mm -hmm. On the natural side, you know, when we see these things, I see bills, and I, you know, I get the bill collector, so it is not like a figment of my imagination. These things are really happening, um, <laughs> you know, to me, but I have to, that's why the scripture tells us to walk in the spirit, because the, the devil comes to attack us. And if we're in the flesh, we will be defeated. Amen. We yeah. have to walk in the spirit and have the spirit of God in order to defeat those things that come up against us. Because the, the devil, especially with money, us with money, when the money is low, we're going to start like, you know, flipping out. You know, we shouldn't. But, you know, like someone said, it's a natural uh, reaction. But um, I see Elder Morris hand up. You want to say something? before we get into the scriptures? Yes, certainly. I think a lot of times what tends to happen to us as saints, we get it mixed up about worry and concern. <clears throat> I was going to, yeah. Worry and concern, two different things, because as long as you live in this body, you're going to be concerned about everything that come along in your life. It's just the way it works. If we could control our emotions, then we probably wouldn't do some of the stuff we already did. But the truth of the matter is, we don't have to worry, but we're going to be concerned. And, and just as well as, as the enemy bring that stuff to us, right? And they, and, they, and they make the statement about, somebody said it's real profound. He said, you can't stop the bird from flying around your head, but you can certainly stop it from landing. What am I saying? He going to bring it to us. The enemy going to bring everything he think he want to bring to us. Put some new pumps on it, put a nice little skirt on it, whatever it is. The enemy going to bring it. But we don't have to bite. That's the same thing with worry and concern. Yeah, we're going to be concerned. But you ain't got to worry because God will provide. God will bring you out. God will heal your body. God will do everything.
Amen. And worry mixed up. Amen. So would anyone like to read the scriptures? You can take maybe two at a time uh, and we'll be, you know, we'll go through them. We'll come back to them. Therefore, I say unto you. Is that <laughs> That's loud. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body. What you shall put on is not life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Is there another reader? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Anyone else? If not, um, Deacon and some others, you can um, go on and continue reading. Okay. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Past. Um, yeah, go ahead and um, continue. You want me to finish? Oh, uh, uh, Missionary Ivory is reading. Oh, good. Okay. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take the thoughts for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. My God, don't worry. Why do you worry? Why do we worry? And um, those... Um, you know, you have, um, all of you, some of you have stated why we worry, because we don't trust God. And the scripture just said, oh, you have little faith. Your faith is little. I mean, and we can plan some stuff, y'all. We got stuff planned for next year and, and everything else. But it's like, I know back in the day, the older saints would say, if God willing, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. They, they didn't get ahead of themselves and was trying to plan you know, months and weeks in advance. And, you know, and I think, I mean, I try not to do that either because it said, give us our daily bread. We, we walk this thing day by day. Yes. And, you know, we don't know what's going to befall us. But the, the thing that, the one thing we do know is that God is going to take care of us mm -hmm. and he's going to continue to take care of us. Yep, he didn't promise us uh, uh, filet mignon every night and all of that, but he said he will take care of us. Yes. Our cabinets shall not be bare. And if they are, guess what? He's going to touch somebody's heart. It's happened to me many a times. Yeah. Yeah. Touch somebody's heart and they're going to come knocking on the door with groceries and stuff. I know when my kids was little and we were kind of I had five little ones, you know, suffering a little bit financially, you know, but we were blessed and we yeah. were, we were, you know, trusting in God and yeah. a woman of God knocked on the door. And we was just amazed. And, you know, and we made light of like, you know, like, what should we, you know, let's go in the refrigerator. All we have is water, you know, just joking around because we knew God was going to take care of us. So it's how you perceive things. You know, your perception is everything. And God and knock is like, wow, like knew every, I mean, just bought everything that we needed. And so that's how God works. Amen. So we should never worry because if God is taking care of the birds, you know, yes. he's definitely going to take care of 
us, yes. we're made in his own image. Amen. Yes. But now we can't be lazy and just, you know, stuff is not just going to fall out of the sky. Yes. You know, we got to have faith. And like the birds, they dig for worms. God provides, but they got to work. Right. They, they pluck and you see them, you know, That's in the morning right. time. They, they you know, they working too. You know, now the flowers and all that, all they do is bloom. That's but it. you got to water it yeah. and, and do all of that. And so um, we shouldn't worry. And this lesson comes to um, encourage us not to worry. Were there any hands? Um, I'm looking. Any input about any of the scriptures? All these, all these uh, scriptures are so um, encouraging. You know, he's, um, um, verse 25, it says, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat. And we always thinking about what we're trying to eat. And all I know I am, nor yet for your body. You know, the enemy comes to attack our bodies and all that. But God is a healer. Said by his stripes, we're healed. Missionary uh, Burnett, go ahead and um, say whatever you wanted to say. Hey, good morning, everyone. Yes, I was um, just listening to different ones talk about no, don't worry. I remember one time um, years ago, when, like you were saying, my, when my children were small and I had a lot of children and people living with me. And I took them in the garage where our big freezer was. And we didn't have nothing in our freezer. And I, you know, showed them. I said, look at this. I said, we don't have anything in our freezer right now. But we still able to eat. We're not going hungry. And I made that be a lesson to let them know to trust in God and believe in God. Because God is always taking care of us. And not to worry. And I just praise and thank God for that because I wanted to show them and let them know that God has got us and he's always taking care of us. And just remember that. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Uh, Deaconess Smothers. I, um, verse, what is it? Verse 27 stood out for me because it said, and who of you by worrying can add one hour to the length of his life? Or, and the other one is add one cubit. And, you know, all my life, I was trying to add one too, but I wanted to be taller because I was always short. I worried about that. I wanted to be fatter because I was always skinny. And so, you know, and I, I'm telling you, that consumed a lot of my time growing up and even into my adult years. But God doesn't want us to worry about anything. It To me, it implies, and in the lesson that it says, it implies that that God doesn't God doesn't care about us. He don't care enough about you. He going to make you who you going to be, whether you short, tall, in between, whether you can walk, whether you can talk. People that can't talk can do sign. He's going to give us the gifts we need to do his work. So it doesn't accomplish anything. And not one thing is going to happen. So, and it can't even, the one thing that I got out the list was say can't even add a minute to your life. And then, and I'm going to say this about verse 30, and then I'm going to move on. Think about how God makes the flowers so beautiful, how he mm. tends to them. Some flowers you don't even have to water. They just, wow. Right. No effort. They don't got to do nothing. But guess what? Flowers are temporary. They're going to mm. die. And then some of them may grow again. But we're not temporary. So how much more does he care about us? Because he yeah. promised us everlasting life. So we, you know, we got to, we get to look forward to that. It ain't that God care for us today and we, you know, Tomorrow we're going to die and never come back. We have everlasting life. So for me, that, I mean, that, that, that was a lot to me. Um, so I really like that part. But, you know, people have a lack of faith. And it and guess what a lack of faith and worry does and anxiety and all those things we name right. them. Right. They I'm take away that. from your life. They take mm -hmm. away from your life. You can get sick. You could die. You know, people have heart attacks behind them worry. So, you know, yeah. that that. Um, I don't know if he was done, uh, but we have a Galaxy J7 star. Uh, you could speak at this time. Amen. It's Missionary Brooks. The word says he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And that's where we have our faith in him, knowing that yesterday he did it, huh? today, and forevermore. And that's where our faith do build up, you know, and I'm sure everybody has that story. I can remember when we were young kids. And my mom had had uh, broke her back, and uh, in Utah, 
you know, it snows real much, a whole lot. And uh, one day we was going outside and water was, the water was pouring down in the gutters. And as the water was pouring, money was just coming. So God will supply your every need. He said, according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Deaconess Smothers. I just wanted to say in the chat, Sister Maisha Jefferson said we have a new person on the line. I also heard Missionary Burnett say, Michael Walker, welcome you. And Ari, I believe that's, the, I may be pronouncing it wrong, but it's on the line as well. And we just want to welcome you to Sunday School. Hope you enjoy. Oh, yes, I agree. Um, Deaconess Mothers, uh, welcome to Sunday School. We hope you get um, something out of the lesson because it's a lesson that applies to all of us, basically, a, a lot of us, you may not be there right now, but, you know, as we were growing in Christ, we worried about some things until we learned how to, until we um, developed a relationship with God and, and you know, God, you know, um, through his scriptures, through his word, we begin to trust him and stand on his word. Because sometimes it's not going to feel good and you can't hear God or anything, but we have to know that he's there. You know, because this is a faith walk, you know, it's not a fleshly walk. Amen. And, I, and like, we, I've heard people say before, our feelings are not saved. So we, we can't rely on this flesh because this flesh will let us down all the time. And yeah, you might have the might, the means, you know, it's, it amazes me how people will run to other people before they run to God. God is the one that can really supply the meat, need and is all powerful and can touch somebody's you know, um, heart to like do things. But I think the the idea of that is out of our hands and out of our control. That's what we are afraid of. Like, yeah. I can handle this. And then God just sit back and say, okay. And then we, you know, we just kind of run circles and then we come back and say, oh, okay, God. Then we acknowledge him. I think because I could see, you know, evangelist givens. I could see missionary ivory, elder ivory. So they're tangible. But when that thing, you know, when it's like you got to go, you know, you can't, you know, because God, the work of like, you know, the people that you relied on, they ain't going to be there because God is trying to get us to totally rely on him. And I know sometimes that could be a hard thing, but he wants us to trust in him because he will take care of us. Does anyone else like to say something at this time? I don't. I don't see any hands up. I think somebody said something in the chat. Um, um, Deaconess Mothers, if you want to um, check. Uh, but I mean, uh, my oh, uh, sister Jeff Jefferson said amen in the chat. Oh, she, okay. But I would like to say also that we tend to depend on ourselves. You know, we think mm -hmm. we made it happen. If you believe that you're the only reason why something happened, you know, how, you, have you ever heard somebody say, I, we did that, we made that happen, we got that money. And, uh, you know, people be thinking, you cannot think that you, you're sadly mistaken if you think that everything you did was because you were so smart and you were so cool and you were so fresh and all that stuff. Your needs are getting met by God because your needs aren't really getting met when you think when we think that we're doing it ourselves. You will always be anxious and worried when you think you're dependent on yourself. And I just want to give an example that happened yesterday with me and um, someone I'm witnessing to and trying to get them into the Lord. And she was telling me, she said, she's, she's, she's waiting on a specific transplant. So she's telling me, you know, I'm getting down and I'm getting out and, you know, I'm starting not to believe. And, you know, I want to go another way. I want to see, can I? get somebody to buy, you know, or help me. And I said, well, have you tried God? Have you tried praying? Have, she said, I, well, you know, I think that I did so much stuff in my previous life mm. that God is making me wait now in this life. And I said, oh, no, no, honey, God don't work like that. You know, so I started to witness this lesson to her. And so I'm praying that she gets on um, church today because she, you know, I told her, I said, you have to see God for everything. Nothing you could do would surpass what God can do. And he could do anything. He could get you that transplant. He is waiting on you if you if you trust him. But as long as you think you can do it, you just sitting in, that's just like sitting in the middle of the ocean and don't know how to tread water. You ain't going nowhere but down. So the shark's going to get you. So I think it's real important that we know that what we do 
it's not what we do that makes things happen in our life. And I'm one of those people that have said that many times. It's not what we do. It's only what God can do. We have to trust him. Amen. Um, and that is so true. And um, it, 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 it's like, like you said, we have to trust God. And it seems so simple. Right. But like when I see that bill, you know, the 24-hour PG and e notice, been there, done that. You know, and, you know, things are going on in our life. We can't, you know, lose our focus because God didn't promise us like an easy life, a bed of ease, a bed of roses. We have to go through things, but we have to trust that God is going to take care of us regardless, you know, what, what times we fall on. We, we fall on hard times, good times. He's going to be there every step of the way, but it ain't like, you know. Um, things are going to drop out of the sky and all of that. But God, is he will take care of us. I, you know, I know a lot of us can attest that God will take care of us. It may not be the way we want it because, you know, we want stuff lined up. Like, I want it this way, Lord, and then I want it that way. But it's not, it's not going to be like that. God is not going to fashion our, you know, he'll, he'll, meet, he'll meet our needs, not our wants a lot of times. And sometimes we're blessed sometimes and he will, yeah. Mother said, sometimes he'll give us our wants. You're right. But we, but whatever state that we find ourselves in, we have to be content. Um, Elder Ivory. Uh, teacher, I was looking in my um, uh, Sunday school book and, then and it says, why is Jesus cautioning it not to worry or be anxious? And anxiety causes stress, which can cause a stroke, heart failure, mm. and in some cases, death. Oh. So instead of adding to life, worry takes our life. So this is one of the reasons, and I thank God for uh, his word. It gives us the intelligence of what to do and what not to do. And while I'm speaking, if you really look at uh, that, that next scripture, where it talks about Solomon, uh, if I can go there, he said, yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory, mm -hmm. you know, Solomon was rich. He had the best of everything. Yes. The best clothes, you know, the best shoes, you know, mm -hmm. he had everything he needed. It says, and splendor, dressed himself like uh, one of these. It says, but he was not dressed like himself, like one of these. So God, uh, he supplies all our need. God is our provider. Amen. If you really think about the homeless people, and sometimes you need to go to the homeless camps, and they just say, it's not the food, because we eat. It's just the weather that affects us. So God feeds everybody. I just thought I'd bring that up. Amen. Um, Deacon, it's mother. I just have a question to the class. If anyone wants to jump on it, and um, can you share one area of your life where you, about which you worry? Is there an area in your life that you worry about? Missionary Ivory have her hand up. Amen. I would say, I would say yes. You know, just say best as you get. You know, a report. A report back from your doctor. You know, you wasn't expecting anything. You just want to get a typical, regular old mammogram. Been getting it for years. All of a sudden, you get a report. Mm -hmm. And now, you don't know yet. They say that we see something. But I don't know what it is. But because we knew Right. The human emotion steps in. Yes. You know, it steps in and you start saying, what? When? Why? How? So that go that worry. You know, until you know you you, you, you hear the word. And, and that's why we surround ourselves with the word. Yes. We surround ourselves with people in the word to encourage us. The word comes to encourage us. <clears throat> and you sitting there thinking, okay, let me hurry up and get what I need to do. You know, so I can stop worrying, but God has sent his word today. Yes. To let you know, no matter what, God is in control. 
just like he takes care of the birds. You know, the flowers are here today, but they're gone tomorrow. Yes. But Jesus has our life in his hand, and he's in control of our lives. And so therefore, we got to cast our cares upon the Lord, for he cares for us. That's just real. Amen. Um, Sister Sybil and then Deaconess Rachel, those are the only two hands I see. And that is so true before uh, you um, come, Sister Sybil and Sister Rachel. That's true. And sometimes we can conjure up stuff that's not even happening to us. Yes. You know, especially we got to go, like, to, you know, get, get something done. We, are, we already got the symptoms yeah. in our minds. <laughs> You know, it's like, oh my gosh! And don't get on doctor with the with that doctor thing online. You 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 uh, dying? No. Yeah, there's a there's a doctor app or something like that. People get on. It's like you already you already dying because you know. I mean, it's it's amazing how the enemy would trick us. Like, oh, I just read this. And that. I remember one time when my daughter said, "You know what? I think I have such and such. I got the symptoms." I'm like, girl, they ain't nothing but the devil, and, and we buying that. You know, because once once that seed is planted, it'll take off, and you and you you just imagine yourself already yes. sick and, and going through all of that. So you know, cast down those strong imaginations. Yes. You gotta cast that stuff down, because if you don't, you just gonna be all over the place, and your mind is gonna be so unstable, and 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 the worrying is already there. It's gonna take place. And it's going to just trump everything. You ain't thinking about God. Well, yes. this is my, and then you try to justify it spiritually. Well, this is my lot. This Come is on. my, you know, this is what God, you know, sees for my future and all of that. No, don't give in to that. God said he will take care of you and believe that. So uh, Sister Sybil and uh, Deaconess Rachel, did you have anything to say? Okay. Oh, well, uh, I, I want to say this. Why do we worry? Hold on, let me. If we, oh wait, 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 wait. Hold on, mother. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get to you after. No, uh, mother, these, let her we'll go. Okay, go ahead, mother. Let her tell go ahead, mother her. Givens. Okay, go ahead, mother Givens. If we really stay in the can y'all hear her? If we stay yes. on knees, if we look unto God, who is the altar and the finisher of our soul. You get anything that you need. I'm from Jamaica, West Indies. Coming here, I try five times. And wow. they will not let me here because wow. I work for the government. Mm. And they tell me, they say, look, you're working for the government and you don't have to um, want to go nowhere. Mm. Uh, and we're not giving you no paper to go says fine yes. and I says Lord you work for me I came through the border and I'm in this country I came here when I was 34 I'm 84 and wow. they, look at they, God they, God give me everything that I need Ooh, look at God I buy God. I buy home wow. for myself look at God. my son Buy, I buy another one and give to my son. Wow. And Look at God. I don't have a husband to say here is a dime. I work. She works. And get my money and put it. Wow. Give God his. Yeah. I never hold on to it. I don't keep it. And if I see somebody I need, I give them what they need. And God don't let me need nothing. One yeah. for nothing. Wow. I get whatever I need. Wow. Don't have nobody to say here. Wow. He do what he wow. wants to do for me. But you have to stay in him. Don't look to the right, left, back or forth. Be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Yeah, my, God. God. my God. Woo, what a word. And that was a word. That was an encouraging word. Um, Mother Givens, thank you so much. I'm Sister Sybil and then Deaconess Rachel. That was great. Since, that was encouraging. Since, since I've been in this hotel, the Lord has made a way for me to stay here. I've only paid once. And every morning I look up to the ceiling and said, Lord, I thank you for the roof over my head. Because not mm -hmm. once have I slept outdoors. And I thank him for that. Amen. Um, Deaconess Rachel. Um. I worry because I have a child who isn't saved yet. I worry because I worry about my husband and his health. 
I worry about money. I worry about my job. I worry about everything, everything. But every day I have to get up and remind myself that God's got this. When I go to sleep at night, I have to remind myself God's got this. He told me in his word that he's got me. So I might not see him working in the background, but he's still, he's already got it worked out. And that's what I have to keep my faith on. Amen. And um, Elder Moore said, when you've been cutting up in your life, then when discomfort comes or things that are disappointing, then we start to worry. And that that's true. Because sometimes we bring things on ourselves yes, right. and God is still so merciful. But we don't mean that, you know, we going to, you know, like he'll he'll wipe the slate clean, but we might have to go through that. You know, it's not like, oh, I done made it through. Lord, forgive me, forgive me. Yeah, grace is still there, but we don't know. You know, it, it might be discomforting, you know, that God take us through because of our own decisions and stuff. Yes. You know, um, anyone else had anything to say? This is such a good lesson. Sure, sure, Missionary Ivory. Elder Ivory said earlier that worrying can cause a downward spiral and cause you to worry more. It can add stress, it can, it can affect the heart. It can affect the lung. It can affect, right? And mm -hmm. so you can start affecting those 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 muscles or those tissues or those organs. We have shortened our lifespan, right? Yes, by birth. Amen. And so that's something that that I take out of this lesson and hearing the mother. You know, she's eighty four years old. I'm trying to get there. Yeah. <laughs> Right. You know, I'm trying to get there. So what is it that, but what is the remedy? And I think God is saying to cast all our cares. Oh, yeah. right? Because he, he, cares for he, he cares for us. Amen. We can't worry about dying. It's appointed to man to die. Amen. We don't die one day. Yes. Right. Amen. So don't, but don't worry. No worry. It's a win win, it's a win -win situation. Yeah. Exactly. Don't be torn and tossing and going back and forth. Wishy washy, wish, you know, stand flat footed Amen. and believe God. Amen. Believe God. Yes. Trust God. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Believe That's and right. trust so God. Seek ye first. That's right. That's right. That's right. And all of these things shall be added unto you. Yes. Be going to get things done. They'll stay with you. Yes. Be going to walk going left and right. Things will happen. People will do That's things right. to you. That's right. But pray for them. Yes. That's right. Because if you don't pray for them and just, you know, be like a fool, you lose out what God's supposed to give you. Oh, yes. Stay with God. God Amen. is what you go for. Amen. You need to, my husband get up. Every woman around the block is with them. <laughs> I just pray, Lord. Take this thing out of my life. God, take him, move him, and I want for nothing. Amen. And I don't ever get another man coming and say, I love you. Get out of my face. <laughs> I have one that loved me, and he will love me till he take me. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Deacon and Smothers. I was thinking, you know, like the Gentiles in, in, in here. They didn't have a relationship with God. They didn't trust God to provide for their every needs. And I was listening to um, Deaconess Brown and she said, she, you know, she worry about everything, but then she got to remember, she got to trust God for everything. So he knows what our needs are. You know, it says that you provide for him according to his riches and glory. And as, as Mother Gibbons said, you know, sometimes he give you what you want. Now, and yeah. how about that? That's a how big, big that? deal. But he know we need to trust him. We need to believe that he will provide for our every need. I mean, there's so many of us on this line that might not be saying anything, but I know it's happened for you. But you're sitting there wondering, well, how am I going to do this? You know, I, it happens for me all the time because I'm here. I'm and and this is not poor mouth talking because I'm rich. But God provides for every need. So my mortgage went up two hundred dollars, and the first thing I said, where I'm gonna get the money from? And the next thing I said, well, God got it. And that, I left it there. And when it came time for the extra $200, there it was. And I don't even know 
how I did it, how where it came from, but that was six months ago. So where do it come from for the last six months? God got me. So I have to yeah. trust and believe that. The other thing we have to trust and believe in is that we're God's children. How yeah. do you watch over your children? How do yeah. you provide for your children? How yeah. do you provide for their every need? When they couldn't bathe, you bathed them. When they couldn't feed themselves, you fed them. When they couldn't go to the store and buy their own clothes. And sometimes we still buying clothes for our adult children. When That's they right. couldn't pay their bills, we helping them with their card notes because we don't want them to lose their job. Everything that we do, God is in the way. If you get what I'm saying. If we trust him, he's in the way. He in the way right before you. That a preacher. Move, out the, move out the way. I move out the way. way. I got this. Move out the way. Keep going forward. Don't worry. Don't look back. Move, move out the way. Move forward. That's all. Mm -hmm. he, knows. he will make everything physical, material. And guess what we need to do in order for that to happen? Uh-oh. So we got to do something. Yes, we got to make yes. God our priority. Amen. He got to be first in our <laughs> lives. We got to serve him with all that we have because yes. when we do, he serves us right back. And even when we don't, he serves us right back. So I know that God is my father and my father is a king and he's rich and I don't never have to lack for anything. So Amen. You know, I think this lesson is so, so rich and serving him is what we should be doing and what we should be concerned with because he's going to take care of everything. Amen. Amen. And so consider the, the biblical definitions for consider was to examine or note carefully. Yes. Yes. You know, a lot of times yes. the scripture will say Selah, and that means to think about that, mm -hmm. you know, ponder on that, uh -huh. you know. And so I think a lot of times we just kind of like skim through scriptures. We've been in this oh, thing for, for years and all of that. But, you know, the word of God is like yes. an onion. It's got different layers to it. And every time you read it, you're going to get a different revelation. Amen. Praise God. So we can't just, you know, and then our tribulations are different. We can't go off of something that we didn't did two years ago. Oh, God brought me out mighty. It's a different, you know, um, a different trial and tribulation. Amen. We have to trust God in everything. We can't rely on, oh, back in the day. No, nope. it says now faith. We yes. got to have this faith right now. Yes. Amen. Yes. And we can't see it. Amen. Because if we could see it, it's not faith. Amen. Sometimes we don't see our next meal. Yes. We don't see our next check coming or whatever. But God is going to make a way. Exactly. You know, we can make payment arrangements. Hello. Yes. Yes. Been there, done that. I'm just being transparent. Yes. You know, but even in yes. that is a blessing. Amen. Yes. Uh, missionary Ivory had her hand up. Amen. Let me just... Okay. Okay. Just to step in what you just said, and you know, God take care of the necessity things of life. Yes. Amen. You know, the necessity things, and we have to learn to be content. Amen. Praise in what God. We have, Praise God. Not yes. try to get what the Joneses have. You better say that. Amen. I was, was going to say that. I was going to say that. I was going to say that. As as the Bible just said, yes. yes. My say God. God. Oh, man. My God. You know, and I looked at uh, the Paul, Paul letter to Timothy, and he was saying over in uh, 1 Timothy 6 and 8, and it says this, and I'm going to read it in the Amplified Bible. It says, But if we have food and clothing mm. with these, we shall be content. Yes. Yes. Satisfied. Yes. Amen. Where would you got in your closet? Right. Amen. Back in the day, they taught us how to take an outfit, one dress, and you could tweak that dress. Mm -hmm. Amen. But, and then, then let me read this in Hebrews 13 and 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, greed. We talked about that, not trying to want something somebody else has, and be content with such things that ye have. For he have said, I will. Never leave thee nor forsake thee. Yeah. And then if you go down a little further, it says, Oh, ye of little faith. Yeah. Not too much faith. Little. 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 Oh, little. Little. Oh, ye of little faith. You count your God short. Amen. Amen. Okay, go ahead, Elder Ivory. We got time. Go ahead, Elder Ivory. Um, oh. Yeah, because I don't I don't see Pastor on, so we're just gonna go on. Okay, I'm gonna piggyback off of her 
Amen. And I, I think we read around that scripture where it said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So God don't want us to be no worry about you know, word wars, you know, they think the worst, you know, and they think, like you said, you know, it's, we're doomed, you yes. know, right. it, it, it ain't gonna happen, right? No negativity, no faith at all. And then I was reading about this, and it said, a, a, a worry war, you know, they, they, they think so hard about the situation, and it never ever happens. Oh my God. I'm gonna lose my home. My God. I got cancer. Wow. I'm gonna die. Lord. And they never die. I got a person See? I know. I know that's and true. Now, they have cancer. And they say they've been waiting to die for over eight years. Stop. See? They eight. been they they got the diagnosis, but God has healed them, but they get waiting to die. After eight years. Wow. And that's torment to me. Ooh. Yes, yes. That is torment. Yes. They're not saved, y'all. But if you say, yeah. you think like this, oh, right. ye a little baby. Yes. My God. My God. Person that lived for eight years and waiting to die. Uh, Missionary Edmondson. You know, I have a little, a little phrase that I use, and it goes like this why worry. When you can pray. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Right. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Um, Elder Ivory. I, I had an auntie. She just called me. And she said she got diagnosed with, with cancer. But she was encouraging <laughs> us mm -hmm. uh, by her faith. Yes. She said, I got the diagnosis. It is cancer. But I'm just believing God. I got to go through the process. I got to get it out. Then I got to start uh, radiation. radiation and chemo. And I'm waiting for her just to crack. But she was standing on God's word, Amen. trusting, Amen. believing God, giving me a worried moment about it. She said, it hit me. She said, it hit me. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. said, nephew, mm -hmm. it hit me. Mm -hmm. But after it hit me, that's when I had to step into my spiritual Amen. side. Amen. And that the spirit man can go to the natural. I just believe God. I'm going to process. Trust in God. I'm not going to worry. Amen. In my stroke. Stroke. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, so this is a great lesson, uh, missionary for that. Amen. Omir, Omir, this uh, this is a great lesson. God don't want us to worry. Amen. He want us to be like. Amen. 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 So, Amen. Yes. Praise God. Uh, anybody else have their hand up? Um, want to say anything? Um, but that's so true, um, missionary Ivory. I was going to say, we can't look at everybody else's situation because we, like I said uh, last week, we're on this avenue. We got our own street. We got our own boulevard. So we can't say, oh, the Jones is over there. They really got it going on. We don't know what the Jones are going through or we don't know what, what's going on in their house. So we can't look over the fence and say, oh, why is God not blessing me? Why, why, why? You know, David said his foot almost slipped because he worrying yeah. about the sinners. I, I was doing that at work like, these people ain't thinking about God and they just prospering, but we don't know the end of those people. Right. Amen. Praise right. God. We better stay on our own little road or whatever and keep on driving and let God do it for us. Amen. We can't worry about everybody else. Amen. I mean, like I'm saying like, so engulfed, like, oh, man, she got a new car. They got a new house. God bless them. Yeah. Because the same God that blessed them like God that bless can bless yeah. me as well. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. So are there any any more hands? or Oh, um, uh, lovely right. Go right ahead. Amen. I am enjoying this lesson. Um, just like you were saying, missionary, um, that was a big problem for me when I first got saved in particular. 
because you do look at other people who are not living for God and you're like, well, why do they have this or why do they have that? You know, it says, seek ye first. And I felt like, well, I'm, I'm saved. I'm doing all I can to live right. And I'm struggling. It seemed like I started struggling more after I got saved. But then I had to realize that God's ultimate goal is to get me to heaven. Amen. To get me in, in the right place with him. It's not, you know, to make sure that I have this or I have that. And so I had to manage my own expectations and what I was thinking of as a blessing instead of looking at, you know, he was meeting every need. Like you said, we may not have our wants, but he was meeting every need. So I had to manage what I was thinking about uh, and what I was expecting from him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yep. And that's, I mean, like I said, these lessons don't just come for us to just read them and you know, because most of us know about, you know, those things that the prophets and everybody went through. But this is, you know, this is a lesson so that we could adhere to these lessons mm -hmm. and learn from the lessons mm -hmm. and do the lessons. Amen. Praise God. And so um, I guess we're going to go on and we'll stop, I think, at um, um, Elder Keys. Tell us what time. Um, what? 1115, I think. Uh, we'll stop. Um, yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. So, again, this was a really good lesson, and we thank God for the input because we all been there, and we're some of us are right there right now. And this lesson just comes to encourage us that God will take care of you. Yeah. If He's taking care of all of this yes, stuff, the birds and the, and, the, and, the, and the trees and all of that, they have their seasons. You know, God will surely take care of us. Elder Ivory, did you have something to say? Yeah. And when you really look at it, I mean, just, just do an inventory of your own life and just really think about how far God has brought you. Come on now. I mean, we, we're a right. mess. Right. You know, I mean, and if you really look at the, uh, we talked about materialism. Yes. The Joneses, you know, we don't know what it takes for people to try to, you know, stay on top. And even some millionaires are so stressed out and where you think they're going to lose what they got, you know, and looking over their shoulder because of their, uh, uh, whatever they have, you know, God don't want, want us doing that. And when I, I'm talking about me now. When I first got saved, I didn't have a suit. Mm. But when, now that I look back at how God and my just God. blessed me, you know, Amen. And, and, and just really supply my needs. Amen. You know, I mean, I, Seek it first, the yes. kingdom of God. Yes. I'm not worried about no house, no car, no shoes, no clothes, but God had it. Mm -hmm. God did that. Yes. And that's what God is saying. You know, you don't want us seeking materialism, you know, trying to be all that in a bag of chips. Amen. Because sometimes that stuff will cause you to worry. You get a big old house and can't pay the phone. Okay. <laughs> get a big old car and can't keep up the load. Right. You know, right. But if God bless you with it, he's going to make it. Amen. 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 Praise God. And, and that that is um, so true. Beautiful lesson just comes to encourage us. You know, don't worry because it naturally because we said first natural then spiritual naturally, you know, we, we, we have things that that that, you know, drop in our systems when we start worrying and stressed out you know, cause us to have a heart attack, a stroke, and all of that. Because we're, like, really thinking about that stuff. And we worry ourselves to death. I mean, you know. When you can pray, see Jesus. I never heard that one. All right. To have to stay in you. That's right. Or you see somebody, you judge them for what they are. That's right. Seek God and do His will, and He will give you all your will. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for having the mothers here. Amen. That's on fire for God. That's still that's still on, on the road. Amen. For salvation, isn't that encouraging? Amen. Still fiery, amen. Yeah. I've known this woman of God for years. We used to go out and witness together, and boy, she'd be knocking on them doors, and like, <laughs> she, you know, and she still have that that spirit of excitement yeah. about the word, amen. Yeah. 
and some, you know, I, I can say myself, I mean, like sometimes I'm, I, don't, I ain't feeling all like that, amen? But you encouraged me, mother. You know, you just gotta, you just gotta keep, she didn't been through some stuff, amen? Praise God. And you can teach the young people, amen, that if God did it for you, she said she was in Jamaica trying to get here and they was giving her grief and all of that, wouldn't let her come through. But guess what? She got here. she been here since, um, since 35. Well, she came at 35 and she's eight. How old are you now, mother? 84 years old. Look at God. And God, not one house, two houses, amen, gave one to her son. What, that's what kind of God I want to seek after, amen? Praise God. What an encouragement. What an encouraging word, amen? Praise God. Praise God. God is a good God. Yes, he is. You know, don't worry. God is going to do it for you, amen? Just hold on just a little while longer, amen? God is going to take care of us, amen? Yeah. He said it in his word. If we can only take him at his word, yeah. if, only, if we can only take him at his word and stand on it, no matter how we feeling and no matter what it look like, God is going to take care of us, amen? So we thank you for those who are out. We thank you for those who are on, on Zoom. And so we're going to have Deaconess um, Smothers to pray us out. And we ask that you be a blessing, if you can, to our Sunday school. Amen. And we thank you in advance. Um, but let me do the, um, I guess we're here. <laughs> so we can do the our motto. Hey, I haven't done that in over a year. Amen. Right. And so if we can stand so I can dismiss, or you want to say the prayer first? I don't, you know, I didn't forgot. Prayer. Okay, prayer first. Go ahead, Deacon Smith. And then I'll dismiss us. You know, it's been. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for this day that you have made, Lord. We're going to rejoice and be glad in, in the first furtherance of our service. We thank you, Lord, for a blessed Sunday school lesson today. We don't have to worry, Lord, because you are in charge and large, Lord. We believe that you will do everything that you said you will do. Lord, we thank you for blessing our service. Bless those who gave. Bless those who couldn't give. And bless those who wanted to give. Bless those who talked. Bless those who didn't talk. And bless those who wanted to talk, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, because you're God and nothing's too difficult for you to do. And you, we live, move, and have our being. We thank you for everything, God, not some things, but everything. And we thank you for the furtherance of our service today. Bless us. Let us continue on. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Our motto, our motto, a child saved, is a soul saved, is a soul saved, plus a life, plus a life. Our Proverbs, our proverb, the wicked, the wicked shall be turned into hell. Shall be turned into hell. And all nations, and all nations, get God. Get forget God. Our slogan, our slogan, we shall never, never, we shall never, we shall never say fail. Amen. Dismiss. Amen.